Thanks so much for having me, Ed. Um, I want to ask you, why do we need a mental wellness expert? Do our words matter? Does how we show up matter? You see, after 12 years of owning two gyms, franchise gyms, I recognize that even though I think I'm Wonder Woman, being able to juggle being a wife, being a mother, owning a business, growing another business, what really matters is mental wellness. And so some people will say mental health or are you a health and wellness speaker? Well, no, I'm a mental wellness speaker. And what I mean by that is this. In a world where we say healthy, a lot of people just think of physical. But what I recognize is health is actually at least seven areas. It is your physical, emotional, mental, financial health, relationship health, career health, and spiritual health. We have at least seven dimensions to our health. So when people would come to my gym and they would be overwhelmed with work or their relationships or their finances, no matter how much time they spent on the treadmill, they never felt relieved. They never felt better. I've never helped anybody lose weight, though I help thousands of clients between my two gyms. What I help people with is their mindset. What I help people with is changing their habits. What I help people with is starting to look for what was good in their life so that they could build on that. You see, as a mental wellness expert, what I'm trying to help you focus is what are you thinking about all day long? What are the stories you're repeating to yourself that no longer serve you? What are the thoughts you have about yourself, about other people? How do you show up every day? I personally don't watch the news and I know some of you do and think I should, and I'm okay with that. But I'm not okay watching the news. You see, I think there's enough negative in our mind to distract us from all the joy and beauty there is in the world. I get up every day and literally look for beauty. What will I see today? Will I see it on a walk? Will I see it in my dogs, in a friend, in a child, in my husband, in my home? I look for beauty. I look for the good stuff. And then I am aware of the struggle. A lot of people are struggling. I think whether you have a mental illness or not, over the last two years, so many people have been on the spectrum, spectrum of anxiety, depression, overwhelm. And for me, that's what I do. I come in and I speak to the heart, mind, and soul of a person. I was with some speaker friends the other day and we were saying, you need hand, which means actionable. You need head logical, and you need heart, the emotional part. And when I get to speak to audiences, what happens is they start to think like, oh my gosh, Annie, I thought I was doing pretty good, but I'm afraid to leave my house. That was one of the comments last week. Or somebody else saying, I feel so alone. I didn't know anyone else felt so alone. Another woman I met in recovery who said, I didn't realize that my choices were being watched by so many and that I was making a positive influence in the world. You see, as a mental health expert, what I'm doing is helping people create new habits, create new self-talk. A lot of people say the narrative. What I like to say is it's your story. What is the story you're telling yourself, you're saying about yourself, and does it serve you and serve those around you? I think we have to start with ourselves to get filled up. It is never selfish to make time to calm yourself, to get exercise, to get good nutrition, to have laughter with friends. It isn't selfish, it is selfful. And what I recognize in owning those two franchises and juggling many different things at the same time is that I did not, if I did not take care of myself first, I was depleted and I could not serve my clients the way that I wanted to serve them. And because of that, I really started to think about what does it look like to serve me? And I am not saying you have the same agenda as me, but what I am saying is if you want your association or organization to run well, first take care of yourself and then show up better. And if you lose some people along the way, it's okay. They might not be the right fit for you, but if you take care of yourself first, taking care time to move, I say movement is my medicine. Uh, I've written two books and I have two more coming out soon, but actually I've written five books, but the one I wanted to share with you is Be the Exception and The Pineapple Principle. And what I wanted to just share with you about these books just briefly is the seven keys they used to be steps, but people don't need more to do. They need a better way to be. Be honest. And that's about rewriting the stories that no longer serve you. Be open. That's about you being a mentor to other people, but also receiving mentorship, or as I like to say, a light along your path in the darkness, in the struggle that we're all going through. Removing the stigma, the shame, and the silence around your struggles. Being able to ask for support and receive support. Be healthy. That's those seven areas. That's what I like to talk about. How do you get there? Baby steps. 
build on small successes rather than expecting yourself to turn everything around. The alls and nevers don't work. But if you stay three days a week, I'll add a glass of water. Three days a week, instead of going out to eat, I'll go for a walk. Instead of using that Amazon button, I'll quit spending or create a budget. How about be flexible? How do you feel about change? Most people are afraid of it. I love change. But what I know is all people love change that they choose or that's good for them. Be gentle. What are you beating yourself up about? What struggle, deter, challenge have you gone through that you stayed stuck in? Be gentle with yourself and then be gentle with other people and their detours and struggles. Be courageous, set audacious goals, and then think about how they can make an impact on another person's life, whether it's for cancer or mental illness or heart disease. A mental wellness expert looks for the good and shines a light on other people's good. Be authentic is the last key to this. And it's about being yourself, loving yourself with all the messy parts, saying, you know what, I'm not perfect, but if I only mess up 10 times today, I'm okay. I'm gonna get up tomorrow and do it again. I'm gonna be, take care of myself first so I can take care of others. And the pineapple principle, well, that comes from a poem. It's about standing up straight and looking people in the eye in a world where we're so busy, distracted by our phones or something else. We've lost sight of a simple art to look at another person in the eye. If we do something like that, it changes everything. If we're sweet on the inside. I'm Annie Meehan and my newest book will be The Business of a Bruised Banana. We have two choices with banana, throw it away or use all the ingredients that were given in life so that we can turn it in to sweet banana bread. I'm Annie Meehan, a mental wellness expert, loving to inspire your organizations and associations. Thanks for being with us.